Welcome to this edition of Look Up and Live, a digital media ministry presentation of the Church of God of the Union Assembly in Dalton, Georgia. Thank you for taking time to share a part of your day with us here on Ustream Dalton Services. Now let's join the service already in progress. My, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus. Oh, that I could explain the way I feel. Rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God I know it's real. When I received salvation, I felt such jubilation. When Jesus came and washed my sins away, He gave me strength and power to face the midnight hour with all my heart and soul. I now can say, My, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus! Oh, that I could explain the way I feel. Rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. Now Jesus is my Savior. He gives me love and favor. He's my Redeemer, Master, Lord, and King. Down here I'll tell my story. I'll give God What a joy to serve my Jesus. Oh, that I could explain the way I feel. Rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. My, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus. Oh, that I could explain the way I feel. Rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. It's amazing, but praise God, I know it's real. but I don't believe I can go for a second time on that one this morning. Y'all pray for us. We're honored to be here. Praise the Lord for his good love and mercy. We love you with all our hearts. I've come too far to look back again. There is nothing behind me all the treasures I used to love they've all faded from view there's a new day ahead for me all my heartache is old for I left it at Calvary, where my new life began. I've come too far to look back. My feet have walked through the valley. I've climbed mountains. Cross rivers, desert places I've known. But I'm there in the home shore, the redeemed dark rejoicing. Praise His name, heaven's angels are singing. 
too far to look back Look around, there's no happiness There's no reason for leaving Life will keep you a broken dream Full of sorrows and But turn around, don't look back again. Face the new day before you. Place your heartaches in Jesus' hand. He can mend broken. Rivers, desert places I've known, but I'm bearing the whole shore, the redeemed are rejoicing, heaven's angels are singing. Far to look back, but I'm staring the home shores. The redeemed are rejoicing. Heaven's angels are singing. I've come too far to look back.
the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. It's in the day of provocation. If you will hear his voice today, let the Lord come into your life. Let him give you joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. You know, and we talked about Moses and when he had come to years, he had refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures that we can obtain in this world from the worldly things, the things that are temporal, they're only for a season, Brother Al. They won't last forever. But the Lord said at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That's why I'm here today, Brother Lamar. That's why I seek the Lord. That's why I have the life that I have in my, in my heart, the desire that I have in my heart, that I live for Jesus Christ and for His saints, for His people. God is good all the time. God is there in a the very present help. He'll give you what you have need of before you ever asked. He said He knew your needs. Didn't He do that? I'm so honored today to be here. We're missing quite a few people. After having 475 last week, 275 seems awful small. But the Lord said, whether two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be one in the midst. And I believe that he is here this morning. I trust in him this morning. I want you to open your Bible, if you will, for me, to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, or the 16th chapter, and the 15th verse. Our life is but a vapor. It just appears for a little season, then it vanishes away. What are we going to do in that period of time? What will we do for Jesus Christ in that period of time? We all know that Jesus Christ came here and he died on the cross. We all know that he gave his life for us to be saved. But there's more to it than just Jesus' blood. There's the part on your part. There's a desire that you have to have. There's something that you need within your life. I've watched people work vehemently, Brother Earl, to try to obtain something in life, to try to obtain notoriety, maybe a high standard in their life to where when people look at them, they can tell that they're, they're potent people, that they have things of life maybe that others don't. There are people that will do everything. They get up every morning with a drive and a desire to make an almighty buck. There are people that will walk across town just to try to pick up a dollar off the street corner to go and buy a bottle of whiskey. I don't know the price of them. I'm sure that's not enough. It'd take a lot of them to get it. But they have that addiction. They have that drive. They have that desire. Whatever is in their heart, the Bible said from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I'll ask you this morning, what is your desire today? What kind of desire do you have for the Lord? Here in Corinthians, Paul's writing the 16th chapter and the 15th verse. I'll go to the 14th verse first. It said, let all your, let all your things be done with charity. If we have a love in our life, Whatever it is that we are doing, whatever we are striving to obtain, is to be done with God. It's to be done with love. It's to be done in charity. Let all things be done decency and in order. If we're doing it for the right order, if we're doing it for God, if we're doing it to serve the Lord, if we're doing it to give God glory, then it will be done decently and in order. It will be done in charity. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Archea, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You watch a man when he gets addicted to drugs. He'll do everything that he can, brother, how to try to get a hold of that. It's his every moment. It's his every thought. Somebody that's addicted to alcohol, that's all they ever want. Some people are addicted to work. But these people, the Bible said that they had addicted themselves to the serving of the ministry of the saints. Is that the life that we have this morning? Are we addicted to God? It's there in the book. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Archea, 
and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. I believe this morning that there are some people here that way. I believe there's some that have addicted themselves that every morning they get up. I've been this way when I woke up in the dead hours of midnight, way up in the morning in my mind, running on the Lord, running on things of God. Maybe somebody come to my heart and to my life, get down on my knees and start praying for them. Yeah, if today if we could have that kind of addiction in our life that everything we think about, everything we have is about God. Everything is about God. What do we strive for? I want you to go to St. John. The third chapter. Apostle Paul talked about the things that he spoke about. In one place said, we speak these things not to harm you, but that through the things that we speak, you might have life. This morning you may know the Lord as your Savior. And praise God if you do. You may have. You may have woke up this morning and everything was all right with you and the Lord. But I can guarantee you to say that there's somebody here this morning that needs a touch from God. There's somebody here this morning that sin reigns in their mortal body. There's somebody here this morning that needs to know the Lord. That needs to know what it's like to be able to lay down their head on their pillow at night and know that if God called them from time to eternity, that that be right with the Lord. There's a way that we can get that way if we're not there today. Yes, we have to seek the Lord. Jesus Christ talked to a man by the name of Nicodemus in the third chapter of St. John. In the first verse, he said there was a man of the Pharisee Named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jew. This man he had on the cover. He had on what it looked like he needed to have. He had to be a great man. Most people would have looked at this man in his time and his religion as though he was really something. But Jesus Christ looked beyond what he had on the outside. Jesus Christ looked beyond his notoriety. He looked beyond what he had done. This man had come to Jesus by night. I don't know why he done it. Maybe it's because he's afraid that people would see him go out and talk to the Lord. But nevertheless, even in that condition, Jesus Christ seen him. Jesus Christ reached him a hand. It doesn't matter today what your shape is. It doesn't matter today what your life is. Come to Jesus and he will send you deliverance. Ain't it so? Nicodemus, he had the coat on. He had the covering. He was a ruler of the Jews. One that people looked up to. One most people would have thought was all right. Back in this time, even the Apostle Paul, when he lived a straight sect of religion, most people would have thought that he was what he ought to be. But the Lord knew his heart. Didn't he do that? But before I get to Paul, I want to speak a little bit more about this man, Nicodemus. He said Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews that came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things that thou hast done except God be with him. Today you may recognize the Lord and a man that is preaching his word or maybe it's someone that is living the life among the Gentiles or among those that are without. Just because we recognize Jesus don't mean we have him in our heart. Just because we know that the Lord is, is the Son of God don't mean that we truly have him in our heart. Nicodemus knew who he was. He said, Thou would not have been able to do these things except thou was a man sent from God. But the Lord knew down in his heart that there was something else that this man needed. Yeah, and you may be that way today. You may not be born again, but you can be. 
Here the Lord told Nicodemus, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, any time the Lord said, Verily, verily, it was something he wanted the people to hear, something that he had on his heart that he wanted them to know. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus had the covering on. He lived a pharisaical life. Looked like he was all he needed to be. But the Lord knew better. Today you may be sitting here. You might have a cover on. And you may feel like within yourself that you're where you need to be. But if we're looking to the perfect law of liberty, I'm sure today that we can all find something in our life how that we can lay aside. If we truly get addicted to serving the saints, if we truly get addicted to helping our brother, what was it that the Lord told us? He said that we would treat our brother as ourself. We would treat our neighbor as ourself. If we truly had the love of God, if we truly was addicted to helping our brother, it wouldn't matter what state of life they were in. We'd be willing to reach down and reach the hand to hang down. Try and strengthen those feeble knees. Yeah, lift up those hearts that are heavy laden with sin. That's a Christian. Brother Jack Giles, my pastor when I lived in Atlanta, used to have a saying, some people pray, Lord bless me and my four and no more. If that's the heart we have today, that we're only looking out for ourselves, we're missing the boat. We haven't truly come to repentance. Brother James Pratt preached here Wednesday night and he taught on something that I've been preaching on on the TV program for next month. And I got some good out of it. I'm gonna leave you with that. Maybe you'll watch the program. No, I'm just a teaser. I'll try to get into it before the day is over. Yeah, this man Nicodemus. The Lord told him, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus looked at it from a natural standpoint. And he said, Lord, how can a man when he is old enter in the second time to his mother's womb and be born? He is looking at it all natural. I'll ask you this question. What was born of a woman the first time? It was a spirit, soul, and body, wasn't it? That's what has to be born again. It's the spirit, the soul, and the body. Yes, today if we truly give our heart and our life to Jesus Christ, even if our brother offend us, we'll pray for them. Ain't it so? Boy, sometimes that's hard when we think somebody might have said something about us. Yeah, even about Apostle Paul, I believe it was, one of the writers, he said if it had been an enemy, I could have bore it. But it was one my own equal. One I took sweet counsel together. It's hard for him to bury. But what about Jesus Christ? When old Paul was on his way to Damascus, Brother Rodney, yeah, he had crucified the Lord's people. He was addicted to crucify them instead of addicted to, to ministry to their needs. Ain't it so? Yeah, but when they had come on his way to Damascus, the Lord shone the light down from heaven and struck him to his knees. Yeah, the Lord blinded him. There at that time, Uncle Olin, he had blinded him. And he looked up. And the Lord spoke to him. Yeah, what did he say? He said, Lord, what have I done? He said, you have crucified me. Yeah, he knew who he was because he called him Lord. And he said, Lord, when have I ever crucified thee? When have I ever spoke against thee? Yeah, when you have thus done it unto the least of one of these my children, you have done it unto me. Acts 26 and 13. Acts 26 and 12. 
Whereupon as I went to Damascus with, with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, Apostle Paul was talking to King Agrippa. He said, O king, I tell you, while I'm here, I'm just going to go into this. This man, Apostle Paul, had slain God's people. He had taken Brother Richard and he had put him in prison for serving the Lord. Those people that had come to Jesus. Yeah, Apostle Paul lived the straightest sect of religion, a Pharisee, but he was crucifying. He was killing people that had served the Lord, that had come to Jesus Christ, that had come to know the Lord, and he had crucified them. And because of this, Jesus Christ brought him to his knees because that he didn't sin the work that the Lord had. You say, why did the Lord do that? You remember this. There are some times we get into a place with the Lord. Yeah, maybe that we don't really want to be. Maybe somewhere in our life that God has got us to doing things that we know we ought not to do. Yeah, this saying, this man sometimes, they're the man that is within. That I would, I do not. The things that I would, that I, that I would not, that I do. Sometimes we get to that place to where we can't do the things that we know that God would have us to do. I want to tell you this. If you'll put your eyes on the Lord, no matter where you are at, if you'll just watch Jesus Christ, he'll bring you through that battle. He'll bring you through that trial. And because of that battle, because of that trial, he'll get glory and he'll get honor. That's what he done with Paul. Don't you know that God, from the very beginning of Paul's preaching, or his life. Don't you know that he could have led him the right way to start with? Sure he could have. But Paul didn't choose that way. He chose another way. He chose to persecute God's people. But all these things, just like when the Lord had raised up Moses and he raised up Pharaoh, he raised him up to show in in his power. Yeah, if we could get that picture today. Our life, sometimes we do things we know we shouldn't do. But if we'll just come to Jesus through those trials, through those heartaches, through those battles, when we come to the Lord and we lay it all aside and we get born again, we get clean yeah, through the word, then God will get glory and honor through the things that we have done by the cleansing and the washing and the regeneration. Apostle Paul, he was put in prison. You see, the things that he had done to the Jews, because of those things, when he got converted, they wanted him to be killed. They had found him. After that he had been converted, they had found him in the synagogue teaching the very things that he had taught against. And when they found him there, they put him in prison. They bound him. And they wanted him to be killed. The rulers of the Jews, Felix and Festus and King Agrippa, these men Paul came before him. Festus, he told Agrippa, he said, I can't take and crucify this man because I found no wrong in the things that he had done. What was it that he had done? Now this man, Paul, was preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yeah, praise the Lord. He was preaching life everlasting. He was preaching that if you'll be born again, you can see the kingdom of God. What a beautiful thought it is. He had to know that he could preach those things. He only was able to do it because that the Lord had shone the light down. Yeah, but the old Felix, he wouldn't crucify him. He wouldn't bring him to trial because the Jews that had known his life from the beginning wasn't there to stand the test. Yes, neither when he brought him to Felix, or Festus rather, 
Was he able to do the same? But Festus told him, said, what would thou? He said, I'll speak for myself. Yeah, take me to Caesar. Yeah, but Felix took him to Agrippa and he brought him before the king. And as he was standing there, yeah, the first verse of the 26th chapter, chapter of Acts, then Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy. That's what I'm doing here today. I know the Lord in my life. I've been born again. I've repented of my sins. What does it mean to repent? It means to stop. It means to turn. It means to go another way. If you're repenting of your sins, you've laid them down at the cross. You've took that word of Jesus Christ and you've applied it to your heart. You've accepted the blood of Jesus that he is the son of the living God, that he did resurrect and that he has ascended to the Father. Repentance is no good without water baptism. Jesus told him when he was talking to Nicodemus, I hope that you can stay with me here. I'm trying to paint you a picture this morning. He said you must be born again. Back to St. John and hold this place because we'll go there again. In Paul's writing, for you to totally understand this, then you need to know what repentance and being born again is. It's St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The fourth verse, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Let me take you on just a little bit of journey in your life. If I could take you back just a little bit. I believe it's in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse, or somewhere about that. It said that man, when he is born of a woman, is a few days and full of trouble. When we are born, that which is born of flesh is flesh. When we are born of a woman, we are born here in the place that God has sent us through the, the enmity and the iniquity that happened back in the garden. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, we're a few days and we're full of trouble. We live our life and we get the things that Satan has to offer about us and our flesh becomes filthiness. Our righteousness becomes as filthy rags. Yeah, we become sin. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, but through the blood of Jesus Christ and his everlasting word, if you will accept that Jesus is the Son of God and you'll let this word clean that heart of yours, it won't be doing the things that it used to do. Yeah, this man Nicodemus, he had the coat on, brothers. Yeah, he had the covering on. Yeah, but he didn't have what he needed. Down in his heart, he didn't have the desire for God's people. He was wasn't addicted to serving the saints, was he? Our life is full of sin until we're born again. And when we're born again, something happens. There's a change in our life. There's a change in our bio bodies. Hold this in John 3. Go to 2 Corinthians, 7th chapter, and the first verse. I hope this is a proven a blessing to you this morning. 2 Corinthians 6, 7, and 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved... Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Can you see the two births? Man must be born again. He must be born again. How are we born again? Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit 
perfect in holiness and the fear of God. Turn over in the same chapter up to the eighth verse. Reading down. For though I made you sorrow with a letter, this is Apostle Paul, I told you a while ago that the things that we say are not meant to be hurtful, but to give you everlasting life. If you'll go up to the second verse of the same chapter, seventh chapter and the second verse, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not to this to condemn you, for I said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is thy boldness of speech toward thee, toward you. Great in my glory of you. I am filled with, your, with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all tribulations. These things that he done wasn't done to trouble him. For when we come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that cast down, that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. These things that we preach to you, the things that you get through the word of God, they are meant to be a comfort. What is it that comforts you if you repent of your sins and are baptized? The Bible said that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the comforter. That is what gives you everlasting life. It's through his word. Seventh chapter, eighth verse. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorrow, though it were before a season. Now get, get this verse. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrow, but that you sorrowed to repentance. When your heart gets to a place that you really truly feel deep within yourself, that you're sorry for the things that you've done wrong. Those things will cause you to come to repentance. That godly sorrow, the things that you know that are not like God. If you are in your life, you are doing things. Maybe you get in the flesh over something that somebody has said or done. If you get in that type of a spirit, that's not of God. If we truly get a godly sorrow and those things come upon us, we'll be fighting against that. We'll war against the flesh, ain't it so? We'll get a hold of that thing. Yeah, we'll tell it to go to hell where it come from. We'll seek the Lord while he may be found. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrow, but that you sorrow to repentance. For godly sorrow, for you were made sorrow after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. These things that we preach to you are not to hurt you, but to give you life. You see, it was Jesus that truly started this repentance all the way to the Holy Ghost. I know that John preached repentance for remission, but it was Jesus that brought the cleansing. Praise God. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. What is salvation? It's deliverance. If in your life today there is something that you wish that God would take out of your life, I said it on the start. You may have woke up this morning and your joy may be that. That's joy unspeakable. You may know the Lord and your heart may be clear of anything. But I'd peradventure to say that somebody here this morning came to church said Lord I need help God I'm fighting a battle you know why Jesus died at the cross he knew it was your only way You know why I stand in this pulpit and I preach this everlasting gospel? 
I know it's your only way. If we could have read our way through, God would have set up a publishing house, made sure everybody had a Bible, and that would have been all they had to do. But it's like when Philip came upon the eunuch and he told him, said, understand this, what thou readest? He said, how can I except some man guide me? It comes through the preached word. That deliverance comes through the preached word. I'm not saying that you shouldn't study. The Bible said that they searched the scriptures daily to see if what the apostles was preaching was true or not. Don't take it just because I said it. (laughs) Who am I fooling this morning? I don't believe there's anybody here that trusts me personally that much. But I believe today that when a man preaches under the Holy Ghost, if you'll truly accept it, he'll take that wrong desire out of your heart and he'll give you what Apostle Paul's fixing to say. Listen to this. Tenth verse. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. What will the sorrow of God do? What will a godly sorrow do for you? For behold, this self same thing, that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Have we been slack there at all? Have we been slack there at all? Have we let this thing say things that it ought not to say? Proverbs 18 and 4, I believe. If that's not it, I'll quote it. I'll quote it, and then I'll let him pull it up. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Go to the verse above there, if you will. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. What is it that fills your belly this morning? What is it that fills your desire? What kind of addiction do you have today? Are we like the house of Stephanus that was addicted to serving the saints? Are we rather having a word that would rather cause someone to be offended? I know sometimes, Brother Harold, things are done honestly. Maybe we say something in a manner that is to to be humorous or maybe it's not even something that's humorous but we just want to be right in the things that we say and do and that can come across as an offense to some we need to be careful of what we say the things that we do a man is satisfied his belly is satisfied with the fruit of his mouth And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. There are a lot of people that have faced death due to what someone else said. I'll give you a great example of that. Thou shalt not surely die. How more example can we have than that? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. That's what satisfied the devil. That's what satisfied. Yeah, the person that took of that fruit. Today, if we're preaching things, if we're teaching things, if we're going around and speaking things that are unseemly, if we're saying things that are not of God, if we're doing things to try to crucify someone else, 
Apostle Paul, friends, he lived a straight and sect of religion, a Pharisee. He was doing what he thought he was supposed to do. He had on the cover. Yeah, he looked like he was doing right, but his heart wasn't right. Neither was Nicodemus. We can profess, but do we possess? In fact, if nothing else I say today goes home with you, I want you to get that. You can profess holiness all day long, but what you got right here is what matters. What's in the heart, that's what matters. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Back to 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, or 7 and 11. For behold, this self-seen thing. This self-seen thing that ye sorrow after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourself. Being free. Being born again. As Jesus said. My wife told me the other day. I'm sorry. Man, you skip around too much. Sometimes people don't understand what you're saying. When I was a young minister, first starting out preaching, in about my third year, Brother Lonnie, I got teamed up with Brother Charlie. Yeah. I was his assistant pastor in Hamilton, Ohio. First weekend he came up, I was expecting him to preach. I was planning to get Tar sitting beside him. When we set the music down, he said, go ahead. Whoo. From the time I got up to I sat down, I didn't slow down. I was wide open. Some of you have experienced that already here, I know. After church, patted me on the back, said I enjoyed the service. Didn't catch it at the time. Said he enjoyed the service. Later on that week, I was over at Brother Johnny's house, and Brother Charlie walks in the garage, and he said, boy, Brother, said, he called him Herbie then. said, Herbie, said, man, you ought to have been in Ohio. Said, Stoney Priest, said, man, he was a fireball. Said, he is all over the place. Said, I didn't understand a word he said. So if I get a little excited sometimes, it comes natural. Most of you know my granddaddy. I still don't think he was, uh, I'll leave that alone. Yeah, what clearing of yourself? What do you mean clearing of yourself? Jesus said in the fifth verse of the third chapter of St. John again, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. I explained that to you. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. I want you to listen to this verse, okay? The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell from where it cometh or where it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Is that what it said? Let's read it again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it, whence it cometh or where it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Born. Of the Spirit. 
Being born of the Spirit is when you repent of your sins and are baptized. He said if you repent of your sins and are baptized, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we know that it came on the day of Pentecost. That's another sermon we can get into. It came on the day of Pentecost. How many has ever witnessed the mighty power of God when the wind blows through and the trees from the tornado, the hurricanes, or even just, just side winds blows things to the ground, blows roofs off of buildings. Through the wind, it does that. You see the effect of that wind, but you don't see the wind itself. That's what God was saying about someone being born of the Spirit. There's a lot of things that I don't understand, Brother Harold. Some things are just unexplainable to me. Sometimes you could tell them to me, I still wouldn't get it. For example, I know this is kind of carnal, but the Lord used natural things in his description, just like being born again. Nicodemus, I'm sure that was carnal thinking to him. The Lord even told him, said, if I told you earthly things, if he told him heavenly things, he wouldn't get it. I'll use this as a prime example for the elderly here that, don't, that will remember cassette tapes and then you college kids, it's way beyond me, hard drives and USB ports. I do a lot of recording. I understand that when I speak into a microphone and it goes on the recording that I'm gonna hear myself back. But I ain't smart enough to figure it out. I can't tell you how it happens. Now, there may be some smart people in here that knows how that happens. I'm not one of them. You may be sitting there today saying, how does this work? I don't understand. Well, I don't understand that either, but it still works. That wind that blows, you can see the effects of it. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. If God's wind can blow a building off its foundation, don't you think His Spirit can take sin out of your life? Don't you think that it can change your heart? It can cause you not to live a, sin life, a sinful life? What did it say in Hebrews have or in Corinthians having this promise that we walk away from the filth of the flesh, that we live according to God in the spirit. Don't you think, you may not understand it, but trust me, it works. You may be addicted to drugs. You may be addicted to alcohol. You may be addicted to making more money than you know how to spend. Let me tell you, if you're born of God, you will get addicted to helping your brother. You will be addicted to ministering to the saints. Praise the Lord. You'll wake up in the morning and say, what can I do for somebody today? Where you at, Brother Reggie? He told me the other day, he said, what's wrong with people nowadays? Said you can't hardly get them to do anything. Used to in the old day, if somebody had a, a, a leaky faucet and didn't know how to fix it, would somebody come over and help them? Somebody's bathroom's falling through the floor, they come over and put them a new bathroom in. Somebody's roof get blown off and come over and put a new one on for them. Where is that love of God? Where is that love that we need to have for Jesus? Can we get addicted to the ministry of the saints this morning? Can you give Jesus a hand clap of praise today? <laughs> praise the Lord. Come to Jesus. Let him wash away the filth of the flesh. You say, well, I'm not out living in sin. He that knoweth to do good. Hmm. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it is sin. If you're sowing discord among your brother, it is sin. 
If you're saying things to cause someone to die spiritually, it is sin. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Not only is the devil going to go to hell, but all those who believe him will go to hell. Likewise, not only will Jesus Christ sit by the Father, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my Father in his throne. Can we get addicted to the Lord today? Can we have that desire, that vehement desire? Let's go back now. For behold, the 11th verse, 7th chapter, 2 Corinthians. For behold, this self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, Yea, what clearing of yourselves, I showed you what that was. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. A desire, a vehement desire. A desire to live for the Lord. Live for Jesus Christ. Do we have that? I'm going to say this and then I'm going to come to a close. I told you about Apostle Paul. And King Agrippa, Paul told him, said, I'm, I'm preaching the things that I once destroyed. And now, because you are willing to please the Jews, I stand before you. I stand before you being charged for this preaching of Jesus Christ. He told Agrippa, said, I know you know the works I know you know God. Agrippa was a king, a judge. He said, I know you know him. And the things that I'm talking about, these are not hidden things, he said. Is it so hard to think that one could rise from the dead? That's what Paul was telling King Agrippa. He said, is it, is it so hard for you to think that one could rise from the dead? You see, he was preaching the resurrection to Jesus. Acts 26. Acts 26 and 21. Or we'll just start at the 19th verse. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. That's where the Lord had knocked him to his knees. But she first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, because that he was, because he had obeyed the Lord, because that he had went to the Lord and, the, and, and God had given him a plan, and he went and preached those words because that he obeyed the Lord. The Jews wanted to kill him. And these judges were willing to do so just to appease the Jews. But they also said, I found no wrong in this man. And because he said that he would go and talk to Caesar, we will not crucify him. God done these things so he could get glory so Paul could preach these words for these causes the Jews sought, caught me in the temple and went about to kill me therefore having therefore obtained help of God I continued unto this day witnessing both to the small and great saying none of none other things than those which the prophets had, had said would come that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise among the dead and should shew light unto the people and to the Gentiles you see that's what he was preaching that Christ could suffer, would suffer. Jesus even said that he'd have to do that. That he would suffer these things. And because that Paul spoke for himself and so convincingly talked to King Agrippa, King Agrippa said, 28th verse, then, the king, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. This man had the cover. He had the cover. He had what looked like 
needed to be. He had the notoriety, but he didn't get fully persuaded. You see, just because we play the part and we look like Christians don't mean we are. Just because Nicodemus was a prosperous man didn't mean that he had what he needed. We must be born again. Thou has almost persuaded me. And then Paul went on to say, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. Paul wanted people to be saved. He wanted them to have salvation. He wanted them to be converted. He wanted them to be convinced that being a Christian was the right thing to do. You want to know why we come here today? Most of us was raised here, but that's not why we're here. We're here because we want to be a Christian. We want to truly be Christ-like. We want people to know when we walk through those doors that Christ is in our life to live. Amen. Look Up and Live is a digital media ministries presentation of the Church of God of the Union Assembly in Dalton, Georgia. If you're in the Dalton area, we'd love to have you visit with us at any of our regularly scheduled services. For additional information, find us on the web at lookup, letter N, live, dot com. Now on behalf of the entire church family here in Dalton, God bless you and remember, it's not about us, but it's all about him.